of part two. We talked yesterday about use of indefinite integrals. Now let's talk about use of definite integrals. Uh, the, the thinking is a little different here. Small modification. In, in some ways it's more work, but in some ways it's less work. So uh, let's start with this idea. If I told you x is some graph and I'm defining it as only the region from 0 to 3, it's the part I care about, right? And I later on told you, okay, u is based off x, but u is x plus 2. Or in other words, u is 2 more than any x value. If x is from 0 to 3, then u would be from... I don't know if somebody say, all right, u is more than 2 more than every x value. So if x is 0 to 3, then u is 2 to 5. Okay, there you go. All right. Now, imagine then, this is kind of like if I had a graph that looked just like this. And then I made an exact copy of the shape. And actually, let's go here. An exact copy of the shape, but the, this curve was just shifted over two units. Wouldn't this area be still exactly the same as that area if I had drawn it well? Despite the fact that the curve would probably be different because it would be shifted over by 2 and I'd need a different equation for that. And my limits of integration instead of from 0 to 2 now would be from, or 0 to 3 would now be from 2 to 5. The answers would come out the same because the area stayed the same. You follow? Now that's the idea on uh, you sub problem. You're kind of renaming the function a little bit to make your integration cleaner, and the limits will change because of that, but the answer will be the same. All right, so here's the process. You got this um, hideous integral, and it looks like a function within a function, so I think you. The idea is you still first choose you. What do you want to let u equal? x squared. You knew that well. You've learned that well. Good. It's the inside of the composite function. You then find the corresponding du, which in this case... Now, you don't look up here for du. Once you chose u, you take the derivative of your u, which is 2x dx. We Then you look up and compare and say, well, I don't have 2x dx. I have x dx. So you would probably then isolate x dx by dividing 2 over and get something like 1 half du. Yeah? I could make my substitutions at that point, and I would have cosine of u, and instead of x dx, what would I be putting there? d over 2 or 1 half du, and I could write that 1 half out front, preferably, but I'll, I can do that in a second. All right. Now, up to that point, then it's all just like yesterday. Do you agree? All right. Now, the part that will change then are the limits. These limits are x values. That's an x of 0 to an x of root pi. And I can't stick those on now that I'm talking about you. It's a lie. I can't lie to people. So I am going to change. An x of 0 or would correspond to a u of 0 squared or 0. So that actually did change. But an x of root pi and u is x squared would be root pi squared, or just straight up pi. Now, those are u values now, rather than x values. Got me in? Cool. Integrate, my friends. The half can be pulled out front. What's the antiderivative of cosine? <coughs> Sine u. Okay, now here's the second place that this is different. Normally on a u sub problem, I would sub back and put it in x terms, right? That is not the case on definite integrals. I change those limits to be u values, and so I can use them for u. No sub back necessary. In a definite integral, you get a little less work at the back end because you can just stay in u. One half sine of pi minus sine of zero is... You answer this question now. Please tell me you know sine of pi. Thank you. It's a little slow there. Okay. 
that then is the idea on a definite integral u sub. You change the limits of integration to match your u. Uh, let's try one more together. I, I felt like yesterday I actually gave you these complicated problems, but I forgot to get the hardest ones in there. The hardest u sub problems are when people don't see them as u sub problems. This, for example, people don't think of that as u sub because it, first of all, it doesn't look like this complicated product. And you don't see, hey, one's the derivative of the other. People don't see u sub. It. But it's u sub because this is a function within the function. So you should u sub it. What will we let u equal? Negative x. Okay, that is something. du then is negative dx. Now, I don't have a negative dx, so as far as dx, I'm going to put in a negative du in its place. Leave. Now, the values on the limits of integration. If x is 2, then u is negative 2. And if x is 3, then u is negative 3, because u is the opposite of x. When I put in a 2 for x, I get a negative 2 for u and so on. So the integral becomes, I'm going to just bring that negative out front on my negative du. You see that negative du? I'm going to put that negative out front and call this from negative 2 to negative 3 of e, 4 e to the, actually, can I bring the 4 out front too? Is that cool? Are you with me, people? I'm going to put the negative out front, the 4 out front, and go e to the u du. Now I integrate. Negative 4 stays out front. e to the u is antiderivative is e to the u. Negative 2, negative 3. So I get negative 4 times e to the negative 3 minus e to the negative 2. I could clean it up if I had to, but I could do that. You get in that field. You make your sub, but you change the limits of integration, and you don't sub back. Try those two below, and let's see how this is going. I will be walking around, and I'll be happy, happy, happy to help you if you have questions. Yes, please. So each of those cores practically be accurately in the same place as the x value that you have. So with the, these are x values because these are x so when x was 2, u was negative 2. So as a lower limit, I put in negative 2 and replace one. When x was 3, it was negative 3. So that I put in negative 2. Negative 3, so it's 2. Negative 3. 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 Negative um, you could, and the answer would be yeah. yeah. Is this how you're going to do it? Yeah. Um, I, you typically do that, but it doesn't break that not to do it. So. Keep working, but what's your U on the first one? On the X, yes.
How did you do on the first one? Did you get one for it? Am I going too fast? Did you not have a chance to finish it on your own? How'd you do zero? The upper, this time? Where did this zero come from? That zero came from plugging one into my u substitution. So if x is one, then u would be log of one. Log of one is e to what power is 1, and that's 0, right? Okay. So that's where that lower 0 came from. It's, it's, it's kind of, if you look at tonight's homework, it, it's all you sub. <laughs> so you should ask now, because if you don't, you're going to have a rough night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Where did the, so I like, this is good, but you don't have a 2dx, so that 2 needs to be dealt with. Oh, so it's not in lots of places. You should usually have it half out for it, so yes, it's in. Then you will just be like, possibly, but. Talk it over, let me know if you have questions. So you look at the function within the function, <coughs> right? So you use the inside. So you let the people put the inside of the function. Good thing. Uh, you could use tools, but it's better if you let both the inside of the function. So you use you sub, you should let u equal the inside of the composite function. So the inside of the function within the function, you would probably be best with 2x minus pi over 6. Now, there are actually some, there's not a one hard fast u. You could actually use a u of 2x, but it's not easier. Um, you want to make your life easier. So the best u is probably 2x minus pi over 6. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I don't, again, I don't want to rush you, but I also uh, don't want to wait for everybody for one person. So, do you is two uh, dx? Do you agree if that's the case? And that 2 isn't there. So we d talked yesterday about how if all you have is dx, then that 2 really needs to be 
moved over there so that when I go to substitute for what I actually have, uh, that'll become one half to you. All right. Um, if x is zero, then u is two times zero minus pi over six or negative pi over six, right? If x is pi over six, then u is two pi over six minus pi over six or positive pi over six. So did your after your changes, did you get something like a half inside or a half outside? Whichever you prefer. Negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 secant squared u du. That's your new integral. And the objective is to make an easier problem with that. Okay, so uh, what's the antiderivative of secant squared? Tangent. One half tangent of u from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. And then we see how solid your trig skills are. Very solid, diamond solid, or jello solid. Uh, what's tangent of pi over 6? Root 3 over 3. I'm feeling diamond solid. What's tangent of negative pi over 6? Negative root 3 over 3. So ne minus the negative. Remember, the fundamental theorem is minus the second outcome. So minus that negative is positive. We uh, so a half of two root three over threes amounts to a root three over three. You win. Okay. All right. Um, one in an AP kind of style. This is uh, this was not hard. Sometimes it's hard to dig up AP multiple choice problems. As I mentioned earlier, there are forty-five multiple choice questions on an AP exam, and then there's six free response questions. Of those 45, at least four are use of, at least four, and sometimes up to seven. Um, this is a big skill. It's really important. Um, and I can guarantee you on free response, it'll occur at least twice. So it's, it's a really big deal. Uh, this is a pretty common uh, type. Give it a go, and uh, we'll see if you can choose the correct answer. There is one correct answer. Make sure you choose the one. Uh, later on, I guess you could boil down the test track, but I recommend you just do the problem the right way. So what do you conclude? A, B, C, D, or E? Did I make a mistake? It's D. Oh, D. I looked at C. Yeah, D. That's what I have. <laughs> so I don't know if you are as dumb as me, but um, I know lots of calculus. What I don't seem to know is how to find my answer in the choices. And so often when I make a D, my biggest mistake is I chose those are on one, which is dumb. So be more like Ethan and choose the one you actually have, which is D. Um, do you agree? Any questions? Okay, cool. Um, hopefully that'll go well. I'll post the key online.
Um, if if you don't understand you said you should probably come and set it back because like, again it's all used up. Um, would you tell me what you have on questions on you still have fifty. Uh, yesterday I just did second derivative because it was so big, but today we're gonna hit fifty and fifty one. So what questions do you have on fifty, my young pupils? Can you say nine? One. One, I'm oh, sorry. One and did I hear four? Yeah, I did. One. Yeah. Uh, seven. One, seven. This is 50 again. Make sure you're looking at the right one. One, seven. 24. 24. One, seven, and 24. All right. Here we go. I keep forgetting to do that. Someday I'll remember. All right, um, one. Ah, uh, this is a good one. Yes. Yeah, okay. Particle moms. Uh, so I I don't I don't uh, I guess you don't really need an equation because. Uh, by giving you, or a picture rather, because giving you an equation, it kind of defines what your variables are. But I, I just am a picture kind of guy. I, uh, I see a circle with the radius of three center of the origin. Uh, remember, uh, in terms of points and what I expect to see, I expect on the related rates problem you to interpret the givens and write them. Um, it would also be helpful if you actually labeled it, here's what I'm given. Although if you just went straight to dx, dt is this, I'd still give you the point. But if you want to be friendly and do good math, communicate. Uh, it says the y-coordinate is decreasing at a rate of 2 units per second at the instant. dy, dt then, y is changing in a negative way 2 units per second when it's at the point... 2 root 2, 1. 2 root 2 is more than 1. So 2 root 2, 1. That right there should be enough to tell you how it's moving. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. If at that point y is decreasing, it must be going in a clockwise fashion. Yeah? They want dx dt at the instant it's at that point. Okay, so um, usually I would then develop or find an equation relating to variables, and a lot of these related rates problems, that's not given to you, and you have to draw these triangles or find a proportion or similar triangles. But in this case, the equation is given to you. It's just this equation. Now we differentiate with respect to time. You take the derivative with respect to time. What's the derivative with respect to time? Show me that derivative technique. 2x d dx dt. Remember, you take the derivative of the outside function, then the derivative on the variable with respect to time. Plus 2y dy dt. Derivative of 9, please don't tell me it's 9. It's 0. Okay. Um, if you put in now, then solve, or sub, then solve, then put in, whatever you want, I want to put stuff in now. So I have 2 times. Actually, do you mind if I just divide everything by 2 to dump a 2 make my life a little easier? And so then, x is 2 root 2. dx dt is that which I want to find. y is 1. And dy dt is negative 2 equals 0. If I isolate dx dt, then I would move this over, becoming positive 2. Divide that over. And I get 1 over root 2 units per second. Does that make sense? Actually, I'll tell you, it makes sense. Why does it make sense? Look at the picture and how it's moving. At this point, if y is decreasing, is x getting bigger or smaller? Bigger, because I'm moving right. I'm getting bigger, and so an x change as positive it makes sense, yeah? Okay. At what instant would y be temporarily not changing? When 
when it's when what? When x equals three, wouldn't y change a lot then? When y equals three or negative three, at those microseconds, it's all x change. When is it all y change? At x equals three and x equals negative three, that's when it's all y change. Okay. Uh, that would actually make sense in here too if you put in an x of three, then it would be all y change. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Uh, number seven. Question on seven. Is that still a question? Yeah. All righty. These are getting pretty intricate. In some cases, I wish I would have given them longer boxes because these are pretty hairy. Oh, never mind. I was looking at the wrong problem. Um, seven. So you have f is e to the x squared. I understand that if you're like me, then you're probably saying, gosh, I can do the polynomial ones. You can go to the x cubed, I can lock that thing. But it's when these functions get crazy, that's when things get difficult. And that's true. That's why right, it's painful to get the practice on it, but that's what's going to make you a better mathematician. So um, first derivative test versus second derivative test here. The idea on the first derivative test is you want to see it as f prime go positive to negative. Um, so let's start with f prime. Via chain rule, I get e to the x squared times 2x. And that is 0 learned to find at x equal 0. Uh, I think the first derivative goes negative to positive around 0. Do you agree with that? So what, you probably didn't have any trouble with the first derivative test. Is it the second derivative test? Here? So, okay. So you had them in there, and that's quite fun. I should have just gone to public. Okay. Now, the thought process on second derivative test isn't about intervals before and intervals after. I don't care about before and after. I care about at, just at. Now, I know from, I know that there's a horizontal tangent or the f graph goes flat at x equals 0. I know at that second the graph goes flat. You use the second derivative to inform you of is it concave up or down at that flat spot to tell you is it an amount of max. Again, I'm not testing a before or after 0. I'm testing right at 0. So I need the second derivative at 0. So the second derivative requires some technique because you have a product now. Things are getting more complicated. That's fine. First stays the same. Derivative of the second is 2. Plus second stays the same, 2x. And then the derivative of e to the x squared it always confounds me on a test when people do the first one right, but then they, the second time they do the derivative, they do it wrong. I, I, you either don't or you don't. And yet that happens a lot. Um, I like a Gray's cone factor. I think I will take out both e to the x squared and 2. Um, I could put 0 in. Actually, I could probably put 0 in just as easily there, couldn't I? Take it back. Factoring doesn't is nice, but it doesn't improve my life a lot. Because I'm plugging in 0, I don't. The cleanup's not really necessary. So at 0, what has this come out to be? e to the 0 is 1 times 2. So 2, I agree. And then this stuff is 0, right? So great. The second derivative is 2. So what? What does that tell me? So it's po the second derivative is positive, implying the curve is concave up. Now that, combined with the flat spot, makes for a bit. So you should, obviously, you should come to the same conclusion in both first and second derivative tests. The reasoning is different. So f has a min. At, I don't know if I said what is the min value or where is the min value. And they didn't, it doesn't really say, I didn't really specify. Um, well, let's just say I say, because it's zero, I'm going to go all the way. At zero, what's f at zero? One. E to the zero is one. Has a minute, zero, one, because... Now, how's the writing, the reasoning go? 
two pieces of evidence. F time at zero is zero to give me that flat spot and F double of positive, you can write positive greater than zero, whatever, but that's not tricky, but you do have to say positive. Notice I didn't say F is concave up, which is true, but it's the second root of the test, okay? So you cite F double is positive to cite the difference. Are with me? Questions on that? Cool. Uh, 24. Do I still have a question on 24? Whoever asked that? Yeah. Okay. 24. What the heck we doing here? All right. Uh, F is differential of zero. G is the square of F. So be it. F at zero is negative one. F prime at zero is negative one. What is G prime at zero? All right. This is good practice. This is kind of this is the way AP often. The College Board makes problems that are normally pretty straightforward, a little harder because of the notation element. So if I want g prime, I need to take the derivative of this. And that is a function within a function. So what derivative technique will I use? Chain. So g prime is the derivative of the outside. Notice I'm not rushing into zero. I'm just saying g prime generally. Then I'll deal with zero second. g prime um, is the derivative of the outside. So that's the derivative on the squaring, which is 2 comes down, drop it to 1. Derivative of the inside, that prime of x, all right? So g prime at 0 would be 2 f at 0, f prime at 0, and then you put in what they give you. f at 0 is negative 1, f prime at 0 is negative 1, so I'm seeing a 2. Does that make sense? Any other questions on fifty? Cool. All right, fifty-one. Number one. Number one. Did you say twenty-two? I'm sorry. Did you say eight? One and twenty-two. Okay. Let me know if you have anything to add. I'm sorry. Eight. Eight. Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, one. This is a humdinger. I made this problem up myself, and uh, the first time I made it, I got my variables wrong. So the guy was like 14 feet tall. That was, uh, and then everybody was questioning whether they did it right. But I fixed it. So you should have got a real logical height of six feet. Um, this to me is the hardest kind of related rates problem. It's where you have to do a lot of uh, figuring out what's the equation. They don't, you know, say it's a code and you obviously know what function to use. It requires a good deal of thought. So you have this light, you have a man, and he's walking away. I think that's how you show walking away. And it's like this, he's casting a shadow. With his hat. All right. Um, so this is nine. How tall is the man? What did you call it? It's it's not a variable, but it is an unknown. Which call? It? What? X. I just called it T. Let me call it T. Shall I? Um, if he walks away, there are two things changing. This is changing how far he is from the lamp, and how long a shadow he casts. Uh, I'll call this X, unless you disapprove, and I'll call this S. Although, typically in my own math, I hate to use S because I frequently confuse them with five. But I'll be careful. OK. Um, you're given some stuff. As he walks away, the tip of his shadow moves twice as fast as he does. This is, by the way, true. When you, I don't know if it's twice as fast, but when you walk away from a lamp, it's usually the shadow goes faster. Uh, so how do you interpret that in the calculus? The tip of the shadow moves twice as fast as he does. 
DSTT is to DXTT. Nice, excellent. Well done. Okay, well done. Uh, how tall is the man? We want we want how tall the man is. Now, um, usually we have an instant here. I guess it doesn't matter the instant. So I, I suppose uh, I'll deal with that later. I, I was that kind of cooped me out. It didn't matter when. Um, it is what it is. We'll see. So uh, I guess that makes sense, and it's not going to change. But know, we'll figure it out. Uh, what's the relationship between all these variables? When you see a triangle, your mind should go, all right, I'm either going to go trig or similar triangles. Similar triangles make more sense. So if you go similar triangles, you should say that, let's see, the smaller triangle is T for the height of the man and S for the shadow, and the larger is 9 for the lamppost and X plus S for the... Um, Horizontal, or the base, right? By proportions, uh, 9 is to T as X plus S is to S. Rather than differentiate that, I think I'll clean up. I have 9S equals TX plus TS. Um, these are like terms, and I guess you could put them together, but because it's TS, maybe it'll help. I don't. Do you want to put those S terms together, or no? Just go. What? Just go. All right. It's it's relative. So now I want to differentiate with respect to time this equation. Keep in mind that T is constant. I know it looks like a. So this is one of the hardest parts. Um, X, it's a variable, and it varies. Um, S is a variable. It varies. T, I, I, yes, it's a variable, but it doesn't vary. It's an unknown. That's why I'm calling it T. It's not that it's changing. It's not changing. How, the man's not growing as he walks away, right? So um, and this is crucial in terms of your calculus. When you go to take the derivative on that T, you shouldn't treat it as a variable. It's a constant. So, what's the derivative of 9s with respect to time? 9ds dt. The derivative of tx, keeping in mind that t is a numerical coefficient, not a variable. So, do I need the product rule? No, you don't. Okay. t is just like there's a 3 there. What would it be if, if I took the derivative of 3x, then it would be 3 dx dt. Well, in this case, it's t dx dt plus t ds dt, all right? Um, I want to find dx dt, um, and I have this fact to substitute in. Do you want to substitute in that fact now or solve for t first? Okay, so if you solve for t, uh, you can factor it out and divide over, and I would have 9 ds dt over dx dt plus ds dt, unless I'm mistaken. Wait, wait. Okay, we're getting there. Now, uh, that's two unknowns, but we can substitute to get it down to one unknown. I know that ds dt is 2 dx dt, so I could call this 2 dx dt. dx dt there is going to stay, and this is 2 dx dt. Now we run it in for the touchdown. The top is, I lost a 9. This is 9 dx dt, right? Or 9, here, yeah, right? So 18 dx dt is in the numerator, and 3 dx dt is in the denominator, so t is 6 feet. The man is 6 feet. All right. Cool. Um, 22. Question on 22. Uh, yes. Okay. Good deal. Uh, this also is good uh, AP style practice. Remind me, horizontal tangent is if dy dx 
is zero in the numerator because there's no rise, but there is some run. That would cause it to go horizontal. All right. So I need to find dy dx and focus on the numerator zeros. Uh, the derivative. Do I differentiate with respect to time or just with respect to x? x. Okay. So 2x dx dx are just 2x plus 8y dy dx. You could use y prime here. I'm not crazy about that notation, but you could equals zero. So dy dx is negative 2x over 8y is negative x over 4y. So horizontal tangent is if x equals zero, right? That's what will cause the numerator to equal zero. However, it doesn't say just, hey, find the x. It says the coordinates. So how do I find the y? Yeah, the original. So at the original, I get 4y squared equals 36. So y squared is 9. So y is plus or minus 3. So the coordinates are 0, 3, and 0, negative 3. Are we cool on A? Yeah. All right, B. Use the second derivative to tell if there is a min, a max, and render at those points. Now, the second derivative test works really well with non-functions. Um, you use the second derivative test frequently when you have uh, implicit derivatives. So, if I have dy dx equals negative x over 4y, then to get the second derivative, I need to take the derivative of that. We, if I do that, then I have the second derivative of y with respect to x. Is on the right hand side of the quotient rule. So, low d high. What's the derivative of, of negative x with respect to x? Negative one minus high negative x d low. What's the derivative of 4y with respect to x? 4 dy dx. You guys did really well with that in the last test. The second derivative implicit. Okay, and then we typically do one more thing. What do we do? Sub. What did you say? I heard someone say. In place of dy dx, we put dy dx, yeah? So negative 4y plus x, and in place of dy dx, I can put what I found for it, negative x over 4y, all over 4y squared. And then you could clean this up and split it up and all that stuff. Um, might be worth it. The common denominator in the top is 4y. And so that would make it negative 16y squared minus x squared all over 4y squared. We, and if I then got another common denominator, it would be quantity 4y cubed over negative 16y squared minus x squared as the cleanest possible version. There's all that algebra that sometimes chips some of you up. Okay? Now, the second derivative test to tell me what's going on at those points. If I take the second derivative at 0, 3, then it's negative 16 times 9 over 12 cubed. Uh, I, I guess I could figure that out, but I don't really need to. I just need to determine the sign. What's the sign? Negative. Less than 0. So what's going on there at that point? Min or max? Max. It's flat with concave down. So there is a max at 0, 3 because, unfortunately, we have that rather cumbersome notation of the first and second derivative. Uh, you could say y prime at 0, 3, um, but I'm going to do things what I think what I think is the right way. Dy dx at 0, 3 is 0. And second derivative at 0, 3 is negative or less than 0. Okay? By the same kind of process, I could say the second derivative 
at 0, negative 3 is negative 16 times 9 minus 0 over negative 12 cubed. The top is negative, and now the bottom is negative, and that's a positive, so that's greater than 0, means concave up with flat, so we have a min at 0, 3, because the first derivative is 0, and the second derivative is positive there. Check. Uh, rather than, oh, that's a little problem. Rather than fly blind, can we uh, just do one quick check? Check your pre calculus skills. What kind of graph is that? Not a circle. Good try. Ellipse. It's an ellipse. Oh, it's an oval. This ain't art class, man. We call this an ellipse. For Pete's sake. x squared over 36 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. So the x changes 4, the y changes 3. Does it make sense then that I have a max at 0, 3? And a min at 0, 1? Yeah. Okay. Um, 8. Is 8 still a question unto me? Is 8 replaced in any way? No. 8 is 4xe to the 2x squared. I think I bought a giving you some bad advice here. I told you, move that 4 right away. You know what? Hold off on the 4 for a second. u is 2x squared, right? So du is 4x dx. So that 4 actually helps you. It's a good du. So leave it there and call this then e to the u du. And don't be in a rush to move that until you see if it helps you. All right. Please make sure I get those today, 50 and 51. So we're totally caught up and you have one homework today. Yay! You're welcome. So happy to be caught up, aren't you? Yeah. All right.